Hello, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Intentional Favor, and on this channel, I share my life experiences on issues pertaining to faith, lifestyle, social work, studying abroad, and I do a little bit of vlogging. If you want to join this community here, you are more than welcome to do so. Please hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the post notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. And to my returning subscribers, you guys are the best you are welcome so guys in today's video um as promised i'll be telling us um sharing with you the program or the course that you can easily apply for to study abroad regardless of your academic qualification yeah regardless of your background whether science art commercial Mention it, regardless of what you studied previously, when it comes to doing your master's, furthering your studies, regardless of whatever background you have, this is a course, this is a program you can apply for based on certain criteria, of course. So I'm here to share all that with you, to bring it to your notice. But adventure, you don't even know which course to go to. Oh, Japan, Japan, Japan. Study abroad, study abroad, study abroad. So what should I do? I studied this course. I don't even know which program because I talked about it in my previous video. Just in case you've not seen that video please go ahead you will see it i shared a lot of tips on that video as regards planning making plans to study abroad so when we reach the point of what program or what course that you are to study we talked about that in that video so today i'm telling us what the course is yeah so the course is social work yes social work you can study social work regardless of your background no matter what you studied in um during your undergraduate studies if you're coming in for masters um i'm sorry for those that maybe might be looking or asking what of undergraduate for now this video is meant for those that want to study masters yeah i'm still going to talk about undergraduate maybe if there is more request about it so if you want to know about studying social work at undergraduate level for adventure you've not even had a degree please let me know in the comment section then i will address that in a different video but this video we are talking about those that already ha have a degree and they want to do masters or they want to change a profession or they're looking for a profession that they will thrive with even when they move abroad one thing you need to know about social work is that in many countries i'm not sure of many maybe i should say in some countries social work is actually shortlisted in their shortage occupation list yeah it is then the sense that it is in high demand the nation the country they need social workers they need social workers they need social workers that is one thing you need to know about social work so you know i'm not telling you something just be based on just let me talk or let me market my profession for whatever reason no i'm still going to leave a disclaimer at the end of this video things you still need to know when you are coming in to study social work but I'm just laying this background now that social work is a course that you can come is a program you can come in for in the uk us canada yeah but i'm very sure 100 percent sure of uk you can come to uk to study social work just because you want to change its profession or you suddenly have a passion for it and you can come in. So if you are still interested, let's continue. So let's talk about the eligibility criteria or the um, entry requirement for social work in most schools, especially in the UK. Remember, I'll be talking more on UK, but most of the things I'm seeing here, do your research. To be honest with you, I'm sharing my experience, but don't still don't neglect the fact that you still need to carry out research on some of these things. But you can take everything I'm telling you, especially when it comes to UK, that there are things that I have researched on my own, and I'm telling you my findings. Not just theoretical, not just because I researched. There are things I myself have also experienced. In case you don't know, I'm currently doing my master's program in social work here in the UK, and I'm in my second year, yeah, and final year. Yeah, so that makes you to know that. So master's in social work in the UK, not just UK, Canada, US, it's two years. Yeah, it's a two-year program. So I'm in my second year, and by God's grace, I'll soon be rounding off. So that's one thing you need to know. It's a two-year program that you are coming in to do so what are the entry requirements um talking about academics now the first thing that you need to know is that most schools they require two one that is second class upper and above so to come in for social work you need to have a second class upper division or first class yeah that is what most universities that is at their entry level however most universities at the same time 
they consider those with two to that is second class lower division yes they also do but there is a but or something attached to that so the major thing is that if you are if you graduated with first class or you graduated with second class upper that is two one congratulations you need not to worry go ahead for that criteria for that criterion mark it good you have met it but in case you graduated with two two they will also consider your application. That is not to say that you can't apply. Yes, you can. But there is something that is very vital. If that is your case, if you finish with a tutu and you still want to do your master's program in social work, that is not to discourage you. You just need to update yourself or yeah you need to update yourself and that is talking about work experience so when they match your work experience if you have a, enough work experience in health and social care then you've got your two to when that is combined together you know universities can consider you for the program so if you have enough experience i'm still going to talk about experience because even if you've finished with first class or you finished with two one you need experience yes it's just that if you finished with two two of course your level of experience is expected to be higher more convincing than those that finished with a two one or first class when we talk of experience what kind of experience are they looking for Definitely, generally speaking, experience in health and social care. So it can be any form of experience, and this experience can either be paid employment or voluntary work. So, so you don't necessarily have to, you know, have employment, you are employed as a social worker. Of course, I said, you don't need to be a social worker to come in to do your master's in social work. As a matter of fact, you know that some UK universities, I did social work, like I studied social work at undergraduate level, and I wanted to come over here to do my master's. Do you know that some schools denied me admission into social work because they say you already have a degree in social work you don't need it so they offered me another course in health and social care but no social work because here in the uk with your undergraduate degree you are already a qualified social worker so saying that oh you already have a degree in social work oh you're already a social worker you don't need to come and do masters in social work again and for that reason they denied me admission into social work they gave me other courses yeah, so when I'm talking about experience, don't think that I'm talking about experience being a social worker. No, this is about social services. So one way that I know that people can actually, just like I said, it can be paid employment or voluntary. So in case you are, you have a good job, of course, or maybe a job that cannot afford you the time to quit and go and look for a job that will give you experience in health and social care. One thing that you can do is to volunteer especially in non-governmental organizations. Look for a good non-governmental organizations. There are a range of experience you can get there. You can get several experience from non-governmental organizations. It can be with youth work, community work. It can be um, anything really that is about social science, like social services rather. So working with the elderly, maybe you can work with elderly. And let me tell you another thing about this experience we are talking about is that it can be personal experience. Yes. Now, what they are looking for in that experience to an extent is some skills that are required for social workers. That is why it is very, very important. And this experience, I know for the UK, most schools want you to have about between three to six months of experience in social care, in health and social care. But Canada, <laughs> I can't remember how many hours experience that you need for Canada. So I think Canada is, I can't remember exactly how many hours, but that hours is more than six months so for you to get that. Yes, for you to actually get that. So for you can, I think three to four months, three to five months, depending, but they just need that experience. And let me tell you one thing, that experience, it, and like I said, it can be paid, it can be voluntary work, it can also be personal experience. Maybe you are a carer. Now, in the UK, being a carer is a paid job. But I know that most people coming from Africa, Nigeria, there's nothing like a paid carer. When your grandma is old, what do you do? You take care of your grandma. The oldest daughter or one of the daughters or the son will take the mother to his or her own house and stay there and nurse the mother. But over here, it's not really like that. That's why they have nursing homes. It's so common. Old, people, old people's home and all that. So your personal experience can be the fact that you know, you are caring for an old, older person, your grandmother, your grandfather. Because you know that there are some skills 
definitely you will get if you really you are not doing it as a professional though yeah but there are some skills you need for you to work well you know how grandmas and grandpas how they can be so at least to an extent you will learn tolerance empathy so many things so one way you can get that experience just it can be in a in, in an ngo that's the most common one for people coming from africa or anywhere non-governmental organizations go there and volunteer those doing community work uh, uh, youth work old people working with can even be teaching people with learning disability teaching people with special needs because it requires it because you can see these are some of the things that social workers these are some of the of the skills that you need as a social worker so those experience will definitely help you to gather them so that is it about the experience so you can volunteer go and become a volunteer in an organization in, a, in an NGO, NGO or something where at the end of the day which might bring me to my next point you need a reference academic and professional reference so that professional reference that is where your work experience comes to play so wherever you gather that experience from you can go to a hospital and decide to tell them that you just want to volunteer you can shadow nurses help them to you know people that are sick because it takes a lot it takes a lot of empathy for you to understand people and help them to help them manage all those kind and that is what social work is all about social work is a helping profession we help people to help themselves so you can go to a hospital become a volunteer because even even a nursing experience with a nursing experience you can it counts as experience that you can use to apply for your master's in social work Yes, so your reference will come from an organization, of course. Professional reference, that's what it's called. You also have your academic reference. So please, think of a lecturer. You need an academic reference and you need a professional reference. So that professional reference, you talk about what you've done, what you've done and some of the skills you have that will, you know, you know, convince the panel that are going through your application that yes, you actually got experience that can help you practice social work or come to study social work. So you might want to know my story. In my case, yes, I volunteered in a hospital. Yes, under the medical social services department. I was there for more than six months and I did well. They even gave me a letter like to say that yes, I did this with them. Yeah, they gave me a it was on their letterhead that I did it with them and though I just did it purposely because I want to have that experience. It's part of my CV already, which is one of the things that, it, that even gave me upper hand when I moved to this country, when it comes to looking for work. So you need professional reference. You also need academic reference. Academic reference will come from your lecturer. So next we'll talk about English language requirements. So um, if you're coming to the UK, Canada, or anywhere, I know that yes, um, Nigeria, they teach us in English. Well, if you can go through the stress of getting a letter that can say that, yes, your, your program was in English already. But see, I'll be honest with you. Avoid all those pro, all those stops. Just avoid it. Just go straight. Write an IELTS. Just do it. It saves you lots of stress. Of stress. You don't just need to consider with they consider this or that. Just write IELTS. That's just my sincere advice to you go for IELTS on this channel I'll still talk about writing IELTS yeah and I talked about motivation in my previous video one of the things that will motivate you to you know push you to go ahead don't just plan I want to study abroad I want to study abroad and at the end of the day you don't do it one thing that will push you go and write your IELTS exam it's capital intensive <laughs> of course you will pay for the exam I don't know, you know, your financial status or something, but when you remove something like 70k, or even I don't know how much it is now, but I think when I wrote mine, I think it was 75k, talking about 75 naira, yeah, 75,000 naira, 75,000 naira, that was what I paid for it, I don't know how much it is now, so imagine removing such kind of money and writing an examination, of course you'll put in your best and you will pass, and then in two years, your certificate expires here. Yeah. So IELTS and most English exams are valid for just two years. So when you just write it already, you know that you have two years to use this particular certificate. And because of that, you will sit up. So just go and write your IELTS and you need to write it and score well. Most universities I know, they require you to have um, the overall band. don't know if you know much about IELTS. We'll do that in a different video. But the overall band, in case you know about IELTS, for social work has to be 7.0. Most universities, you can barely see some that will be 6.5, the overall. But even in that 7.0 being the overall score, the least that you should have in each um, 
in each segment is 6.5 so you can have 6.5 in your reading you can have 6.5 in writing in listening or speaking but of course if you have 6.5 6.5 in the four of them your average will never be 7.0 which will disqualify you because you don't meet it that you don't meet that criteria you have to have an overall band of 7.0 then the least you should have in each one is 6.5 so if you have even if you have 9.0 in reading and in writing you have 6.0 and overall band you have 8.0 8.5 you are still not point five. so the list for each is 6.5 and the overall is 7.0 Let's talk about the application process. How do you apply? When do you apply and all that? Check that out, different universities. I know there are some universities for UK that actually use um, UCAS, universities and colleges admissions system. I think you, usually the deadline is in January. But then we are in March, right? And um, in case you still want to carry on with this vision, it's not too late. You can still look out for schools that you can apply directly to. When you do that, you'll find out that the application process should still be on by now yeah the application process for september intake should still be on and also in the uk there are universities that take for january so if you think that september is too close oh no no i cannot plan and prepare between now and this uh, and um, august before september not to worry for instance my very own school actually we start in january so when you want to apply there is one thing that is very important in your application and that is personal statement or statement of purpose. Very important. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's like the start of your of your application. The panel, that is what they will read. So when you submit your personal statement or your statement of purpose, that is what they will read. They will consider all that. And when they have read it and it's convincing enough, then you 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 met other um, entry requirements then you'll be invited for an interview personal statement i'm definitely going to um make a video on that how to write personal statement for so after writing your personal statement that is one thing they check then they will invite you so they will shortlist so it's not everybody that's like the first stage so after reading the personal statements checking the um entry requirements if you met the entry requirements and your personal statement is good and convincing enough then you will be invited for interview when you are invited for that it means of course mm, you just have one more hurdle to cross so that interview um is usually so nice i i attended so many like i said i applied to so many universities in the uk because i didn't pay any application fee i was just applying i was just applying and yes you might want to know i got accepted in all except those those that are, are like i mentioned earlier those that didn't accept me because i already have social work degree and of course what did they do they offered me another course Yes, but I'll be filming a video telling you how to go about social work interview. But I'm uh, in this particular video, I'm just telling you the stages. So you go for an interview, and um, after that interview, then decision is made. When the decision is made, you will be offered mostly um, an, a, a conditional offer because you still need to go through DBS check, you still need to go through occupational health check. When you come over, you do all those things. So when you pass the interview, the next thing you should be expecting is your offer letter. Conditional, conditional or no conditional, definitely you will have to meet the conditions. And that's like, congratulations. They will congratulate you, even though it's a conditional offer, you still receive your your congratulatory, your congratulatory message. And that is it about it. And ooh, you now prepare to come over to study social work. Disclaimer. Hey, I want to leave a disclaimer at this point. Um, I've said so many good things about social work. You can come in regardless of your background. It doesn't matter and all that. Yes, whilst that is true, I need to leave a disclaimer. I need to tell you something that is very important. Please, don't come into social work just because you want to japa. Don't come into social work just because you just want to, you know, yeah, just explore it or whatever. You need to have passion for this profession. It's a profession. <laughs> and the passion I'm talking about is, of course, um, I don't know if I should film a video on 
what social work is all about but you can google it but if you want me to do that please let me know in the comment section to give you an overview of what social work is all about and what it is like studying social work here definitely that one is a short video i'm going to release but if you want to know about social work feel free to let me know in the comment section so please don't just come because you want to japa in your coming japaising can be part of it too yes but please <laughs> let that not be the only thing motivating you to come and study social work because if that is the only thing and you don't consider some other factors i'm going to mention you will get frustrated now social work is a very hectic demanding that you really need your spirit soul and body intact to practice even at at education level in social work um there's what we call resilience yes it is one word that every social worker you you must know and you need to have you need to be resilient you just need to be resilient because you will go through so many things People talk about emotional intelligence, you need to, hmm, social work, you need to be emotionally intelligent too. You need to be able to balance because you will hear things, you will see things, and the work is both emotionally draining and physically draining. Yes. So even at, 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 at study level, we that are students, even the program you are coming into, yes, let me tell you, you are coming to do social work, masters, right? It's very hectic. It's not your regular masters. Most masters in the UK is one year, but not social work. It's two years and it's training. I know what some courses when you're doing your masters, you have lectures two times a week. Social work, we have lectures four times a week. Only one lecture for a day. That is how demanding it is. Even undergraduates, they don't experience that. And I know other people running other program, other master's program. It's not like that. It is so demanding. You need to be resilient. You need to be strong emotionally. You need to know what you are coming for. And above all, please have passion. Don't come into social work because of the money. Please. Don't come for the money. Come because you want to help people. Yes, of course, why you are helping people is a rewarding profession. It is very, very rewarding very rewarding in profession so when you come into social work don't just come because of the money money japa japa you might get frustrated along the way you can read it there are so many um blogs how people quit social work they quit because they can't continue but i believe that if you have the passion the passion can be built along the line to be honest but if you have the passion too and you know what you are there to affect lives to help the vulnerable i think that will keep you going regardless of what you face so that is my little disclaimer that i'm leaving in this video so we've come to the end of this video please don't forget to like this video if you did also comment let me know your views other questions you have, what are the things that you need to know that you think I didn't cover in this video, feel free to let me know in the comment section. And importantly, have you subscribed? Have you? Please subscribe to my channel. Also, share this video with your friends. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that anytime I upload a new video, you will be notified. Alright? So, I will see you in my next video. Stay blessed and take care of yourself. Bye-bye!